people, it's time for the Tojo podcast once again. It's Thursday and we are talking today all things body, mind, spirit. So we have an amazing podcast lined up for you today. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram at Tojo Fit, Facebook Tojo Fitness or subscribe to the YouTube channel and you will never miss one of these amazing podcasts. What are we talking about today, babe? Well, I'm glad you asked me. Today we are talking about the keys to muscle growth, the master keys to muscle growth. Last week we talked about how to lose fat. Today we're talking about how to gain muscle and it really isn't as difficult as it's made out to be. No. I mean, it's it's not as complicated. It's hard work. It's hard. But it's just not complicated. We we get so many magazines and so many podcasts which are just full of very, very detailed information. And yet at its root, things really haven't changed very much from when Pumping Iron came out in the 70s. It's still the same principles. Yeah, it is the same principles. So we're going to share like four keys today that you can make a note of as to how to start gaining muscle. For example, if you've just joined this journey of the whole fitness world, the door is open to you, you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Now I wanna start changing my body. Now I wanna start putting you know, the cuts here, I wanna start sculpting here, which is the that's like most of the exciting part of a PT. So, here we go, number one. Number one is you've got to work it. If you wanna grow it. body, you have to work your body. Work it, work it, work it, work it. Mm. Now, often you go to the gym and you see, you know what it's like, you see people at the gym and they're on their phone, they're texting, they're talking. I saw somebody Uh. doing squats the other day while they were on a conversation with with their girlfriend or whatever, having an argument with their girlfriend on their phone while they're squatting. That is not working a muscle. Let's talk a little bit about- working his mouth muscle. Possibly. Let's talk about how we work a muscle. We're talking about frequency, yeah. we're talking about intensity, and we're talking about volume. Mm-hmm. So frequency, we're looking at hitting the gym ideally. This is ideal. You might not be able to do this, you might have to work into this, but for maximum muscle gains, we're looking at working the muscle twice a week, mm. particularly the large muscles. Yeah. That could translate into going to the gym perhaps five times a week. But each muscle, so the legs, we're going to work the muscle out twice a week. The chest, twice a week. The back, twice a week. The arms, if they're only worked out once a week, that's okay. But the big muscle groups, we need to be hitting them regularly and hitting them hard. Don't panic if you're not, though. Because you're still, you will still build muscle. We're talking about building serious muscle, right? We're talking about maximising your muscle gains here. Yeah. So you'll still make progress if you're at the gym twice a week. That's fine. Yes. It's better than nothing. But what we're talking about here is how to maximise those gains. So frequency, if you can do it, get there five times a week, perhaps four times a week, certainly five times a week. Yeah. You need to get two days off for reasons we're gonna tell you later on. Mm-hmm. But five times a week and work those big muscle groups. Focus on the big, big muscle groups. And that comes to our next point, which is about intensity. Yeah, so when you do come to actually start training that muscle in the gym, um, you're, <laughs> there are so many different uh, forms for example, that you see people do. A lot of people would like to speed their way through their reps just to get it over and done with. Here's the thing, you're not gonna hit the muscle if you're going for speed over intensity. Don't go for speed over intensity. You wanna make whatever weight you're lifting, make it look really hard. Slow it down, squeeze it. Don't go for the speed But even if you're lifting a little bit light because you're starting off, make it um, squeeze the muscle enough so it even looks hard. Yeah, that's really big. It doesn't actually matter how much weight you lift. Mm -hmm. This podcast is not about how to lift heavy stuff. This is about how to make maximum muscle gains. And that means that your muscle doesn't know actually the number on the end of the weight. No. It doesn't care. All it knows is the intensity 
which you apply to it. So you can watch some very large bodybuilders sometimes and they'll train and they will use actually quite light weights. Kai Green does this a lot. He'll use quite a light weight and have such mind muscle intensity that a curl with a 20 kilo dumbbell will seem like a curl with a 30 or 40 kilo dumbbell really because heavy. of the mind muscle link. Now most people can build really good biceps with a, up to a 10 kilo dumbbell yeah. if you get the mind muscle link in there. That's the thing, is that if you're lifting without your mind into the movement, into the feel of it, into what your muscle is responding, and you're just you're you're like just looking around the room and not interested, the you have to recruit the the whole body into this to actually build that intensity. You're thinking about it. Where's the peak in the muscle? Where's the contraction? Um, where does the muscle actually start to build in that curl? That's right. If you're deadlifting, if you're deadlifting seriously, mm. you can't think about anything else. No. Your mind is, okay, here we go. Here's the breath. Here's the heels. I'm driving from the heels. That's right. The weight is passing the knees. It's going from a pull into a hip thrust. Mm. Now I'm clenching my buttocks. Now I'm tightening up and retracting yeah. the shoulder blades slightly. Yeah. My head's up. My breathing's right. Everything is in order. And this moment you forget that with a deadlift, you yeah. put yourself in a position of injury. No, that's right, that's right. Always put your mind into the game. Oh yeah, funny we should say about that. Head in the game, we have I'm our sorry, Monday morning there. podcast. Yeah, you did. So intensity is partly about our attitude towards it and yeah. our concentration on it but also just simply going balls to the wall. Yeah. Going balls to the wall doesn't mean you're throwing weights around, but it does mean that you're going to the point that the blood is pouring from your eyes and nose and you're wanting to scream the place down because of pain. We're not particularly talking about like one rep maxes here. No. Um, we're talking about probably about 70% of your one rep max for reps. Yeah, absolutely. So in if we're talking about intensity here, mm. Perhaps you're looking at reps of eight to 10. Yeah. So you've got sets of eight to 10, and this comes on to about oh, what we want to talk about volume. I work my girls out at 12. <laughs> Perhaps up to 12. I go up to 15 sometimes, but eight, but somewhere between eight and 15 is fine. Yeah. If you're dropping to six, that's okay. If you go below six, you're really in powerlifting territory, yeah. which is gonna make you strong, but it's not necessarily going to be optimal for building muscle mass. So time and time, and Again, they've produced very, very good reports which document that somewhere rep ranges between eight and 12 is about optimum. About optimum yeah. If you go up to 15, that's fine. You drop to six, that's fine. But between that, so when you get to that 10th rep, yeah. That is balls to the wall. You are putting in all your concentration. You are going to die. If a nuclear bomb goes off outside, <laughs> you don't hear it because all that there is is that mind in the muscle. And Joe and I, we often talk about this when we've done a really good set of squats or something that you end up with constant ringing your ears mm. from the force of the, of the concentration, the intensity. So intensity 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 and intensity doesn't mean you have to lift crazy weights but it does mean you have to put in crazy amounts of effort yeah definitely so with working it obviously we have we've touched on but we'll talk about volume um so the rep range like we say between eight and 12 reps yep about four to five sets i would say and if you need to put a warm-up set in if you're going to be going into a new muscle group at the gym so you've just, for example, finished chest, mm -hmm. you're all warmed up, yeah. then you're going to go into back, you still need to going to do a warm up. Yeah, just a little bit of a warm up, perhaps two sets, so one set which is at 50% or 40% of what you're going to be lifting, another set at 70%, yeah. and then you're going to be doing four sets or five sets of an exercise yeah. at your working weight. Yeah, a work, that's it, work sets. And you'll perhaps be doing three different exercises for a major muscle group. So yeah. for legs, yeah. Yeah. you might come in, you have a bit of a jog first of all, get the blood pumping. Body weight you're squats. You're then going to be doing some um, squats yeah. at 50% of your working weight yep. then you're going to be doing some squats high reps at about 75 percent then you're going to put on your working weight and you're going to pump out four to five sets of squats then you're going to move on to a second exercise for your legs which might be um, stiff leg deadlifts 
and a third exercise which may be for instance uh, uh, leg extensions yeah. and you're going to do each of those for four to five sets so you've got a total volume yeah, of lot. somewhere between 12 and 15 work sets yeah over the course of three different exercises, hitting the muscle groups from different places. So that's the first key. I just want, I just want to uh, hit on one other point. On yeah, that, go if for that's it. Okay. We are, I know we're talking about eight to 12 reps, um, but I find personally, if I want to start progressing in increasing my weight, I'll sometimes do the top weight for about six, especially if I'm deadlifting. Mm. Um, if I'm like, right, okay, I want to progress from like, I don't know, 70 kilos to 75 to 80 kilo deadlift um i'll go for like the 75 kilo deadlift and i'll just do it for six just to see just to start training my body in that higher weight good call um and then the week after i'll then incorporate that into my work set just that little bit of progression so obviously trying to get progression on an eight rep set that's that's pretty uh, that can be pretty intense but just if you are it's only if you're progressing but progression can be a tiny amount yeah you know you can just put a tiny little 1. amount 1.25 plate on yeah whatever. that's fine now this is why it's really good to work out with a PT because yeah. they will push you when you think you can't do any more when you're going to give up they'll push you a bit further yeah, yeah. let's move on so we get through this so, yeah, we're two. just giving an overview the second key to muscle growth is feed it you work it feed it then you feed it Feed it. Yeah. <laughs> There's the instrumental break there. Yeah. Feed it. Yeah. One reason why lots of people don't grow is because they have no caloric surplus. That is, they're not eating enough or they're not eating enough of the right stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, often again at the gym, you see people, they're new to it and they start eating. They get the idea they've got to eat yeah. and they start eating a shed load of calories. They're eating the wrong stuff and they just get fat. Yes. Or you get other people and they just don't eat enough and they work out and they just don't ever look very much they just get thin so yeah. it's a balancing act here if you're you need 2000 calories mm -hmm. a day to maintain your weight yeah. then you're going to need perhaps 2200 to start gaining muscle mm -hmm. now you don't need to add shed loads of calories no. you need to add about 10 percent to start with up to about 20% of what you need, but normally about 10, 15% over the top. So if you're 2000 calories, add 200 calories on top of that and you'll start gaining muscle. So you've got to come into a caloric surplus. Without that, all your training is going and to go to waste. what we're talking about here, um, so we're actually talking about a little bit of bulk here. Yeah. This is a little bit of bulking. Yeah. Um, so putting on muscle, putting on size. Yes. And you'll you're, you're notice in the bodybuilding world, there's a little bit of jargon where you have a bulking season. And a cutting season. And a cutting season. We are talking here about increasing muscle size right now. So you just need to, you need to go past your maintenance calories and add on, like Tom says, add on another about 200 calories of clean protein, of clean food, don't put on another 200 calories and just go through the McDonald's drive through and say, it's all right, I've got an extra 200 calories today. Yeah, because you, you will gain weight. But what we want to do in a clean bulk mm. is we want to gain the most amount of muscle compared to the Lean smallest tissue. amount of fat. Yeah. So in a clean bulk, you want it so about 80% of your gains is going to be muscle. You'll always gain a little bit of fat Naturally, at the same time, especially yeah. if you're a natural bodybuilder. Yeah. But that's okay because you're going to strip that back later on in the season. But if you're gaining 80% fat and 20% muscle, you're wasting your time. So you've got to be a nice gentle caloric surplus and you've got to be patient, especially if you're natural if you're an enhanced bodybuilder you can get away with this a lot more but if you're a natural bodybuilder you've got to take it slowly you've got to work this incrementally so when we say about caloric surplus we want a nutrient density to our food oh yeah every calorie has to count towards your goal yeah so we're looking at having quality protein mm -hmm. lots of it perhaps mm -hmm. one to 1.5 grams per kilogram yeah. if you're a middle-aged guy or perhaps older than that perhaps up to two grams per kilogram mm. of protein huge amounts of protein um perhaps in a macro breakdown 
of 30% of your calories coming from protein, 40% yep. of your calories coming from carbohydrates, 30% of your calories coming from fat. Mm -hmm. Keep it as a good, broad-based uh, percentage there. And we'll show you later how to record that. But it has to be nutrient dense, right? Yeah, it does. It does. It, like I say, it can't be Big Macs. Yeah. Um, because uh, you are, you're not naturally going to put on uh, just a little bit of a tire, and uh, and that's not what we're looking for. We want to put on lean tissue, lean tissue. One of the things which I discovered, I think we discovered for many years, we had a, an allotment, and we oh. grew all our own fruit and veg. And the one thing we discovered there it's is like, it that it was like the good life. It was quite fun. You know, Tom and Barbara. <laughs> But in growing your fruit and veg, is that the difference it made if you put feed, like like a multivitamin feed, on your tomato plants? Oh man! They grew stronger. They produced more fruit. Juicy. They were tastier. Yeah. They looked better, and they were less likely to suffer from disease. Mm. And that was just from a tiny amount of essentially multivitamin added to the water that you water the tomato plants with. Yeah. And that's why. We bang on about eat your fruit and veg. <laughs> it's not so you have curly hair or something like that. It's because by doing that, it makes a huge difference to your muscle growth, especially, again, if you're a natural bodybuilder, you need to have your body, ev everything in line. Oh, yeah. And having a full balance of vitamins and minerals is so important. You can't get them all from multivits. Eat your fruit and veg it will make it. a lot of difference yeah totally and here's another thing a major major key on the feed it section is when you eat how yeah. often you eat um and is there is all different ones however like if you are going to be serious in bodybuilding you can't go for a certain amount of time and say oops i forgot to eat yeah really big now where everybody's talking about intermittent fasting and so on yeah. listen the big major bodybuilders, the people who do this for a living, mm. do not do much intermittent fasting. In the off season sometimes for health benefits, yeah. but if you're trying to gain muscle, you need to keep that muscle anabolic as much of the time as possible. Yeah. Now, the way it works is that when your body goes into a nitrogen surplus, that is when your body doesn't have enough protein in its system, yeah. it starts catabolizing, that is eating its own muscle. You eat yourself. Yeah, your body eats itself to provide fuel. You don't want that. Mm. You've just spent a lot of time and intensity at the gym and to money. put that muscle on. Yeah. So you want to keep your body constantly supplied with amino acids, with proteins, so that it stays in an anabolic state. Now that means you're going to be eating uh, a small amounts, perhaps 20 grams, 30 grams of protein, every couple of hours throughout your day and even in the middle of the night if you wake up in the middle of the night and you go to the loo in the middle of the night knock a protein shake down <laughs> it's uh i do that sometimes yes he does you want to keep the body anabolic but equally you want to keep the body in a state where there's no glycogen spike mm. where there's no sugar spikes which are creating huge insulin release which creates uh, body fat to be stored yeah. so we do that by not onboarding huge amounts of sugars or huge amounts of carbohydrates all at once we don't overload the system we keep it going with small regular meals so small amounts of carbohydrates if i take on 50 grams of carbohydrates i can burn that if I take that on at breakfast, I can burn that by lunchtime. If I take on 150 grams of carbates, carbohydrates at breakfast, I can't burn it by lunchtime, and so those carbohydrates are gonna be turned into fat. So it's small and regular amounts of food. Small and often. Yes, yeah, small and often throughout the day, perhaps six meals throughout the day, or three larger meals and two or three smaller snacks. This is why um, girls, the ones that are train or the guys, we're always banging on about protein shakes. Have you had your protein shake? Make sure that you do a mid morning and mid afternoon. Yeah. That makes sure that you are not going to go all mid morning and all afternoon without feeding those muscles. And you probably get sick of me for saying it, but you know that's the reason why. And protein shakes are fine. People say, oh, we prefer real food. Protein whey is real food. It's okay. Now, it may not be quite the same as having a rounded meal, but who can have seven rounded meals in the course More. of a day? Anyway, moving on. So, the other thing on this feed it 
is post-workout. Oh, yeah. Cluster your nutrients around your workout an hour before your workout. Get yeah. some quality nutrients in. Mm -hmm. You want carbohydrates an hour before your workout so they have time to digest. Um, and then after your workout, you want to feed your muscles with protein. Don't Cue turn the music. Up, don't turn up to your workout like saying, oh no, I, I only had something half an hour before. Yeah. Like, it won't be released yet. <laughs> if you're going to drive a Formula One car around the track, you need to fill it with petrol. Yes, right. That's so right. So that's it. So work it, feed it, third, rest it. Rest it. There's not a song for that, is there? Um, no, no, not that I can think of. Anyway, rest is actually just as important as work. Yeah, you can only benefit from the workout you can recover from. Mm -hmm. If you, that means that we talked about intensity yeah. regarding working. You need an intensity of attitude about resting. Oh yeah, I do like rest. If you look at lions, lions are big, muscled, ferocious, powerful creatures, wow. but they spend a lot of time resting. Yeah. And that's important because when you're at the gym, you tear the muscle tissue down. Mm -hmm. And when you're at home, when you're at rest, when you're sleeping, Builds when you're just vegging up. out, your muscle is yeah built back up and perhaps built a little bit stronger yeah. than it was before. So you've got to rest the muscle and you've got to be serious about it. If you want to build muscle mass yeah. and you cannot rest, mm. then you will not. You'll just get smaller, weaker and thinner. So when we say your intensity has to go up, your intensity of exercise can only go up to the level that your intensity of rest. That's true. That's true. And, and also, it. just as an aside, if you want to know more about sleep, check out our podcast from a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yes, rest and sleep. During your sleep, your body, it's like the workman, the night workman come out. So roadworks start on your body. Yeah. And all that that was torn down during your gym workout, all the guys have got their high-vis workout, you know, high-vis uh, jackets on, and they got the scaffolding up and they're rebuilding that muscle again whilst you sleep. Yeah, and if you don't get enough, then the potholes will get worse and worse and you'll start picking up injury at the gym, yeah. your gains will dry up. Yeah. So recovery is really, really important. If you are only getting four or five hours a night, you're going to have to reduce your intensity and frequency at the gym, which is going to reduce your gains. Yeah. You don't want to do that. So up your sleep prioritize your sleep and by doing that you can up your intensity at the gym yeah yeah rest it and finally record it ah oh, so important do you see loads of people well i see at the gym i go to loads of people walking around with a notebook yeah and that is because they're not making notes about what's going on in their brain at the time so they don't forget they're actually recording the weight that they lifted on on that day so they put the date the exercise they're doing the muscle group they're working on, how many sets they've done that day, how many reps and at what weight. And sometimes, if if you want to, you put down how you felt on the day as well. Yeah. You know, wasn't in it, felt tired, etc., etc. So you're actually journaling um, and monitoring progress that way. Yeah, that's right. How do you know you're progressing? Yeah, yeah. And you can stay absolutely still. And you know, your husband and wife still says, oh, you look wonderful, honey, but you're not moving forward in actual fact, you're just getting fatter. There's a lot of guys start off really well at the gym. I can't speak for girls, but I know there's a lot of guys, they start off well at the gym. They, you see them in week after week after week, they're doing the same exercises, doing the same thing, and that's perhaps another key we could have thrown in here, yeah. is that, that, that you need to keep changing it, keep changing it, changing it, changing it, changing it. Mm. And they'll do the same things, and they are getting fatter and fatter and fatter, and they're just fat, big lads at the gym. Right. And that's okay if that's what you want to be. But we're talking to bodybuilders. People want to build a decent physique, something that looks great on the beach. You've got to record it. You've yeah. got to keep a track of it. Yeah. So sets and reps, keep a track of what you're doing. Mm. If you keep getting stuck on something, change it up. Or if we're programming you, you'll have it all down on the app. Yeah. FYI. <laughs> if we program you, you rarely do the same thing for very long. We are constantly changing and messing with it, messing with it, messing yeah. with it. You know, people say, if it works, don't mess with it. Oh, in bodybuilding, if it's it. working, mess with it. Because if you don't mess with it, next week it'll stop working. Mm -hmm. Keep messing with it. Yeah. Change your sets and reps up. That's okay. Photos. Yeah, take photos of yourself. Yeah, 
photos. So you'll then start to see, for example, like the um, perhaps sizing your arms, perhaps the cuts that start coming from the shoulders to the bicep, um, the back, how width of the back is now. Yep. Um, legs. You yeah, know, and you're getting some cuts in your legs. I, I, I speak with a lot of ladies and they're like, I'm getting the swoop down my leg. Yeah. Um, which is great. Take photos of it. Have a photo diary as well. Mm. Um, because it means that if you come away from that point, that you have another, re you have that as a reference to come back to. You say, right, I want to get back to where I was there. Yeah, absolutely. I've got some photos of myself when I was right at, at my very, very peak. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'm in my 50s now. And I kind of look back and think, if I can achieve that, that would be fantastic. Um, when you're totally ripped. Because it's very easy. You start putting on your spare tire and you just don't realise it. <laughs> you become used to it. And then you get yeah. your elastic, big elastic pants out, you know? Oh, gosh. So weighing yourself, weight and body fat percentages. Body yeah. fat percentages are really cool mm -hmm. to work from. Now, they're, the scales you use in bathrooms and stuff that give you body fat percentages are really unreliable, but if you use the same scale all the time, yeah. at the same time of day, under the same conditions, you'll be able to see yeah, progress yeah. or regress. Yeah. So record it and be brutal with yourself. Yeah. You know, on season, when you're when you're coming into the summer, you want to have your body fat. Guys, you need your body fat down below 10%. You want to look good on the beach below 10%. That's it. For almost all guys, that's where you're going to look your best. Yeah. You don't ever want to, guys. Girls, <laughs> it's a bit different. Guys, you don't ever want to be above 15%. If you're looking to grow build muscle and not end up as a power lifter with that power lifter physique, then you want to stay, once you reach 15%, you're too high. You now need to be stripping back. So in your off season, I'm in an off season now, so it's a long period of growth. It's hibernation mode. So I'm gonna gradually go, I was about 6%, 5.5% body fat in the middle of the summer. I'm gonna work my way back up to about 13 or 14%. Yeah. When I reach 14% body fat, I'm gonna start stripping back again and see the muscle that I grew during that time. But if I reach 14% in two months' time, I've had a very short growth phase. Yeah. So I've got to, coming back to how we feed it, I have to do my caloric surplus and my nutrient profile just right. So it's gradually building so that by the time I reach about April time, when I want to start cutting, I'm reaching just about 14% body fat and then I can start stripping it back. So weight, body fat percentage is very, very important to keep doing this regularly. Yeah. And lastly... Um, you can record your food on, we use MyFitnessPal, um, and that's a great way of putting in, we, we spoke about your macros earlier, 30% protein, 40% carbohydrates, 30% fat. You can actually program that into MyFitnessPal and record everything you eat, weigh it, mm. record it, and then you'll be able to monitor if you need to put up your calories by an extra hundred. So I came out of my cut from the summer. It's taken me two months as a gradual increase to start gaining weight again. Yeah. I just couldn't gain weight. So through my fitness pal, I was able to monitor, okay, we'll go up to 1,900 calories. No, nope, that's not working. Let's try 2,000 calories. No, nope, that's not working. So I finally found my sweet spot at 2,200 calorie which is a, sur uh, a surplus for me, and now I'm starting, right, we're on the road again now, we're yeah. off. This is the science of it, this is the bookwork of it. Now, look, if you wanna build a great business, you need a great idea, you need to have the drive, you need to be able to sell the product, but if you can't do the bookwork, nobody wants to do the bookwork, but if you can't do it, your business will fail. Mm. Almost certainly it will fail. So you need to learn to do the bookwork. There is a certain amount of bookwork, a certain amount of record keeping that needs to be done. And if you can't do that, then your gains really won't go very far. So you need to be looking, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit myself. I'm going to start weighing my food. I'm going to see exactly where I'm going here so that, that when I go to the gym, I know I've got the fuel in the tank to achieve what I want to do. Yeah. And when I go to sleep at night, I know I've got the fuel in the tank to be able yeah. to repair this body. And my fitness power is free. Um, very, very easy. And it will tell you if you've had too much fat. Yeah. Or it will tell you if you've had, oh, you've gone over on carbs today. 
Yeah. Or if you've gone over on sodium, on sugar, it will monitor everything. It's the best free app that I've come across for actually monitoring and recording my food. So there we have it. Four That's it. Keys. Which are what were they? Number one. Work it. Work, 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 work it. Work. work it. Work it. Number two. Feed it. Feed it. I don't have any more songs left. Number three. Rest it. Rest it. Number four. Record, record it. Record it. Yes, this has been the Tojo Fitness Podcast on this Thursday morning. Um, we hope you've enjoyed listening. We hope it's been a little bit of education for you, um, that you perhaps write some things down, take it forward with you into your fitness journey. Um, and we'll be back on Monday morning. Yes, we will. If you are part of our Tojo tribe, uh, we'll be back Monday morning with Head in the Game. If you want to be part of our Tojo tribe and receive Head in the Game, let us know at tom at tojofitness.com and we'll add you to our little mailing list and you will receive an amazing Monday morning motivation to set you up for your week. God bless you. Have a fantastic week, everyone.